gotta tell you, I've never seen my sister so happy. Oh. If you hurt her, I'll kill you and make it look like an accident. Hey, Ian, Jesus, look at your face. It's just a joke. It's just a joke. Good one. No, the good one is I got a gun. Yeah, I got a gun, and I swear, I'll jam it right up your ear, and I got you again. I got you again. I will work my ass off to get us out of this hole. You know that. We have unconventional healing methods here, Sharon. But I'm not at liberty to discuss that. You're kidding. No, I ain't kidding. It's Aaron Porter, Frank. I don't know who you are or what it is you want, but I do suggest you get off my property. <laughs> Damn it, Carl! <laughs> Well, today on Cinema Confidential, it is with great pleasure that I say hello to a very talented and versatile actor that you know from a lot of productions, and we're going to talk about some of them. And he lives in Bulgaria currently. We're going to find out why. <laughs> Luis Mandilor, hi. It is a pleasure to have you. Zdrasti. Zdrasti. <laughs> well, nice to be here. Thanks for having me. How are you? Why are you in Bulgaria, Luis? We've only got a couple of minutes, right? It's, it's quite the long story. Um, <laughs> well, um, I'm a filmmaker, I'm, I'm an actor, I'm a lover of film, it's what I do. Uh, I bleed out my eyes for over 35 years working hard in the film business and somehow, some way, it brought me to Bulgaria, Sofia, Bulgaria, maybe around four, four and a half years ago. We made a film here and I've been here ever since. I like the city, I'm Greek, place in Athens, we're neighbours, that's the short story, but I'm enjoying the city very much and uh, making movies in this part of, the, this part of the, the globe, actually. You are Greek. You were raised in Australia, though. Correct, yes. And you have another name. It's that is correct. It's not Luis Mandelor. No, it's not, name? it's not even close, is it? <laughs> uh, Ilias Theodosopoulos is the birth given name. Okay. And uh, uh, being somebody who's called Stanislava Ivancheva, I understand <laughs> why you would change that to be more. Uh, you would have had a good time growing up in Melbourne, Australia in the <laughs> 70s, early 70s. It was rough. But uh, yeah, you get the name thing. Yeah. yeah. But both you and your brother changed it to the same surname. My brother first. Uh, when I got to uh, Los Angeles a few years after Costas, uh, I booked a job and they asked me on the spot, what, what do you want your name to be? And they said it's going to be there forever. And I had a minute to make a decision. It's something I actually never thought of. Yeah. Thinking, thinking back, I would have kept Elias. I like Elias. It's my name. But everyone called me Louis Lewis. That was the equivalent for some reason. So my brother changed his name to my mother's maiden name, Mandilaris, which turned into Mandilor. Mm -hmm. And on the spur of the moment, I said, you know, he's my brother. I like the name. So I'm Mandalore as well. Yeah. So that's how it Do happened. Do your parents still call you Elias? Elia. <laughs> Ilya. My mother calls me Ilya, my father calls me Ilya. <laughs> yeah. In other words, I'm always doing something wrong, yeah, so he says it. That's right. Yep. You were actually into sports before acting. You went to LA, correct me if I'm wrong, to become a boxing champion. That was, that was the dream back then, yes. What happened there? <laughs> I got beat up. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> it was a fantastic journey, and I, oh, it was, I always say in life if you're active, and you're in motion, and you're trying to achieve something, whether you get that or not, it doesn't matter, you're active and you have motion, and sometimes other doors open, and you make decisions. So the boxing brought me to Los Angeles, but that uh, led me to become an actor and get involved in the business, so one thing led to another. Yeah. What was your first audition, do you remember? Um, I actually do, it was the one that changed my life. I was boxing six months in my brother's acting class. I really didn't do anything except watch. And one night uh, I got a call to get a contract fight on a Sunday, six rounds with a guy called The Fixer. On Saturday evening, a friend of mine who was in acting class took me to a party. The lady who had the party her name was Mindy Marin. She was doing Necessary Roughness. She heard my voice and said, are you an actor? I said, yes, I lied. <laughs> on Monday, she said, come in and read for the part. Sunday, I fought The Fixer. He gave it to me, the fixer, boom, 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 boom. I couldn't move, I couldn't talk. I went in Monday and gave one of my best auditions because I kept everything real simple because I couldn't move. So they thought I was a professional. It's a true story. And when I left the room, they said, you got the job. <laughs> I so said, cool. And I said to the lady, Mindy Marin, I said, I, I, I'm a, I lied. I said, I'm a boxer. I said, I got beat up. I don't know what I was doing. And she said, that's okay. Just have him do the same thing to you every morning before work. And, you'll give the same performance. True story. Have you considered writing these stories 
for a film or a book? I actually am in the process of uh, doing uh, an autobiographical kind of book. Cool. It's going to be a good one, yeah. Many interesting stories. It's just how it's been. And does it did it help you in any way that your brother was already there? Do you get, did you guys help <coughs> each other or did you have rivalry between the two of you? No, one thing good about my brother and I is we've, we've maintained a great friendship and for sure it helped him being there. Uh, and nowadays as well, we call each other for work, you know, we pass jobs on to each other when we can. So it's been great. And he's, he, he, I do a lot of directing, so he's always gracious enough to come and star in some of my films and make them look better because he's good. Hey, man. Hey, Chan. Just getting a soda. <laughs> Who the hell are you? I'm Joey. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. How you doing? <laughs> what? How you doing? Damn it, Carl. Go wait in the hall. <laughs> Look, I got to apologize on behalf of Carl. Who the hell is Carl? <laughs> I'm a huge friends addict. I, I watch them and I, I repeat the line. Oh, okay, you're, one of, you're one of them. They're, they're okay. kind of crazy, yeah. That explains <laughs> it, yeah. So, Carl <laughs> is a character that I've watched over and over and over again. <clears throat> you know, the only problem is Carl's acting. <laughs> Not the only <laughs> problem, obviously. But how is it being on that set? Great. It was a dream come true. That's why I flinched because <laughs> I think that's part of what got me the job. It was Friday afternoon. We all got a phone call. There was like four or five of us. We had to go to the office. They said, we're casting now. We went in, we auditioned. They said, wait in the room. And it happens sometimes. Yeah. And they come out and they just say, you stay, you guys go. It's, I mean, it's ruthless. <laughs> but I was the stay, so I won. They took me from that audition to the set mm -hmm. and we started rehearsing. It was the great experience. They're all so nice. Mm -hmm. And I knew Matt and Jennifer for many years before that. So to be on the show was a blessing, it was a blessing. And I actually made it into the apartment, which we all thought was special. I wasn't on the street, I opened that fridge. That's true. Yeah, pizza, so. we like pizza. And I flinched. <laughs> Every time he told me off, I went like this, and they said, that got you the gig. I said, all right. Please, can you tell how you doing is Carl? Sorry? Can you say the line, how uh, you doing? Say it incorrectly? <laughs> incorrectly. Because the, the line is, how you doing? And Carl says, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, damn it. Exactly. Damn it, Carl. Damn it, and I flinched. <laughs> Shit. How are you doing? How you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Not how are you doing, like Carl. Uh, but Kevin Bright afterwards said, we never thought we could find a character dumber than Joey. Well done. <laughs> he said that to me. He says, well done, man. You're so dumb. It was so hysterical. <laughs> but you have to be smart to play dumb. Don't, don't get That's me wrong. That's true. That's true. I agree. Totally. How do you say thank you in Greek? Orea visia. Oreia Vigia. That's it, you got it. Oreia Vigia. Let's talk about the other incredibly big production that I believe the entire, I can speak for my own country, and I know that a lot of people all over the world associated with a lot of those characters, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Yeah which became such a huge hit yeah. everywhere. And uh, I remember watching it in London when I was studying and living in London and missing home a lot. So when I watched that movie, I was like, oh my God, that's yeah. my family. That's the family next door. Yeah. We all like that. <laughs> it's true. I've got to tell you, uh, what a wonderful blessing to be part of that family and the journey. We are hoping for a three. Yay. I think Here's everyone everyone would love one, everyone and I think right about now, the people could really use some laughs, you know, because everything's so messed up. But what was interesting about that film, at the same time back then, I was popular on a show called Martial Law. It was a cop TV show, a very famous Asian star called Sama Hung. And make the story short, I was in a restaurant, and I was eating, and there was this Asian community, because it was a Chinese restaurant, and two tables, three tables, all looking at me and going like this. So I thought, oh, Martial Law, you know, the... Asian action show so I went up afterwards and I and they didn't approach me by the way they were just doing this so I approached them and I said thank you I thank you you know I love Samo I love martial law and they went what no my big fat Greek wedding we love it 
<laughs> I thought, wow. So that happened a lot. And yes, the answer, I guess the moral of the story is it was about family. It didn't matter what race, what color, where you were from. We all have a family and they seem to be crazy. <laughs> Yeah. All of us have the crazy situations and, and family members, but yeah, good film and everyone responded. And you guys seem to be getting along a lot, because you know, always on set, obviously on the screen, it looks like everybody's getting along on the set, but it, it really looked like you guys were family. Either you're it's incredible true. actors or it, it was true. Both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we do get along really, really well. Yeah. The second one was great. I share this story that we actually had a house because they rented the whole street, you know, and it was all it was all one big set and they would come get us from the house. But then Nia's real family came in for a week. So you had the real family and the acting family all in one house. Oh, that's fun. That was a party. <laughs> Sure. That was good fun. My, my father, up to this day, he sometimes, uh, um, he loves your character and he quotes, yeah. he's trying to quote. The mischievous Nicholas. Whatever you were teaching, uh, Nicholas teaching, uh, um, what was the word for press? The. <laughs> <laughs> had the pleasure of spending a few months in LA and to see how everything works there and you know how a lot of people are always uh, struggling to get parts, to get to the top, to get that that job that's going to open doors for you. How did Friends and My Big Fat Greek Wedding did that for you? How did they do for you? Um, first of all, good question. It's a crazy business and um, we all know that it's 90 Five ninety-nine percent rejection. Yeah, I think one or one and a half percent of all actors make a living. I mean, these are odds where if you were sane, you would say I'm going to do something else. But when you love something, you know what can you do? As far as getting breaks and whatnot, uh, the friends it was okay. I'm not sure what it did. Just getting the job was incredible. The one episode was all right, but uh, seven would have been better. <laughs> and the plan was to do seven, by the way, but they changed their storyline because they got Bruce Willis. It's a true story. Oh. So I got bumped for Bruce. Can you imagine? But if you're going to get bumped by anyone, yeah. <laughs> why not Bruce? Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, uh, Fat Wedding obviously helped a lot. It was a, a very uh, popular, world, you know, huge success. Uh, they both helped. Look, every job helps, I guess, is the answer to the question. Mm -hmm. Momentum. And, but then again, you know, you have people coming off Academy Awards and a 10 year run on a big show and that you don't see him again. It's crazy business. In a way, there's no rhyme or reason, but every job helps. The business is obviously changing because of the current situation in the world. A lot of things, at least for the foreseeable future, are moving to this part of the world, to Europe, let's say, and then even more to Eastern Europe. In your experience, how, how is that affecting your career? Where are you working predominantly now and on what kind of projects? Me personally, it's, it's, uh, I think it affects it. Like for example, we have two or three through my company and just getting calls ready to go and Los Angeles is closed. So it's affecting everyone, it's horrible. Um, more things are coming to Europe. I have been living and working in Europe, so you know, I'm loving that. But the whole, I mean, in a nutshell, I guess I could say so much, but off the top of my head, this, this horrible COVID situation is, is destroying everyone all around the world. In, I think in every field, in every business, it's horrible. All these years I've kept my secrets. But the time has come to face my past. What are some of the films that you shot here? I shot Rambo 5, Last Blood, here. I was in the beginning sequence and I was blessed to do a scene with uh, the legend himself, Mr. Stallone. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, Doom 2, we shot Doom 2 here. Uh, I shot part of my own personal production called Smokers in Bulgaria. That, Bulgaria is yeah. hot, hot, hot location for shooting, yes. those tattoos <laughs> I'd love to find out my father's about my, my father still thinks they're gonna wash off it's great oh, man. he's so great I think he just <laughs> looks at wonderful. me <laughs> no, he just looks at me and looks at me like yeah okay but every time I get on a Skype with him he's like what are they 
do they wash off? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, okay. Any day now. <laughs> He's like, okay, good. This one's going to be about three months. Anyway, so yeah. <laughs> I think tattoos are personal. You know, I, I try not yeah. to bore anyone with my stories, but they're all pretty symbolic to me and I like them. I, I'm planning on getting a lot more to... My father doesn't want to see this, but... To finish the collection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm planning on getting a few more, but to me, it's always a moment in time when I... You know, when I feel it, I don't think about it. Um, when it happens, it happens. It may not happen again, but... Um, See, you know what? I have recently wrote a script where I have a character that would be perfect for those tattoos. Oh, is that right? You, in general. His nickname is The Greek. The Greek? Mm -hmm. Could have a gig here. <laughs> well, we'll talk about Palika. that on camera later. Kimila Olinika. So, Greek's my language. Yeah, right. there we go. See? Good. What do you like doing here? I mean, not, obviously not just here, but for the time being you are here. So yes. Apart from work, what do you enjoy doing here? I love the city. I love the the, the clubs are closed now, but the clubs are pretty cool. Uh, not that like not that I do that a lot. Music? I do. I like I like a mixture of everything. But you know, you guys play a lot of Greek mixed with Bulgarian. Yeah, yeah, it's sure. just great. Um, the restaurants, food here, the tomatoes, the. The food here is great. I've got my favorite spots and I love going out to eat. It's become my favorite thing now at my age, you know. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, right. a I'm a foodie, I'm a foodie. <laughs> but, you know, I uh, met a few, I made some friends here and um, uh, working out's a big, big thing that I'm starting again now. So there's a couple of gyms. It's a guy that I know is going to do a little bit more jujitsu with me. Is it difficult to maintain steady relationships? I don't mean just uh, with partners, but with friends as well, when you're moving around so much? Yeah, it's pretty difficult. What's your secret about that? Uh, good friends don't, don't bother you. They, when you see them, you see them and nothing changes. It's all the falsies that, that say, why didn't you call me? They're, you know, duvishna there. So... <laughs> Zeleno, Duvijnade, Takaliak. I've got my words, you know what there I'm saying. Go. But um, good friends will, will talk to you when, when they talk to you. They understand you're living on the other side of the world. That applies to partners as well? Uh, difficult relationships have been very difficult uh, in the past because of that. Never in one place and I'm blessed that I'm working and I'm traveling. But right now, uh, all is good. If you weren't an actor, what would you be? <sighs> wow. My two passions are sports, so I'd, for sure I'd be running my own gym and or my own restaurant. Cool. I love I love to cook. I love everything about food. I'm a foodie for real. I'll come to both. I love working out and yeah. eating as well. So. Well, you know, in the future <laughs> that could be a little it could could be on the plans, but that's a lot of work too. But uh, I'm a foodie. I like to cook. Thank you very much. Благодаря много. Благодаря. Харистопол. Харистопол, Полина. Do we end this now? The predator? The predator? If we were small enough, they would eat us. We'd be dead. <laughs> Why? Why would you say that? Why are they... We had a conversation about cats earlier. Because I'm fascinated with, with nature and wildlife. And I tell all my friends, those cute little cats, if we were their size, we'd be breakfast. They're just predators and they are good. So, God bless it, we're bigger than cats. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, you ain't kidding. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good fun.